on F-theory compactification. And in particular, what I'm going to present is some recent results on global constraint that we have obtained about the nature of non-abelian gate symmetry and the uh, nature of matter representation in F-theory compactification. I will start with a few key ingredients of F-theory compactification. Uh, by briefly overviewing the origin of non-abelian gate symmetry, the matter and couplings in this context, and uh, briefly mention implications for globally consistent particle physics, mo physics models. Then I'll turn on a, uh, to recent work uh, that uh, uh, addresses additional global constraints that we can obtain on gate symmetries and corresponding matter representation, when in addition to non-abelian gate symmetries, we also have abelian ones. Abelian gate symmetries uh, in F-theory are associated with different type of divisors, uh, namely those that are related to additional sections in elliptic vibrations, and thus they are related to bordel bay groups. So I highlight this uh, global constraint both on gate symmetry and matter representations of uh, uh, matter in the presence of non-abelian symmetry, but now also adding abelian ones. And also a comment on some potential implications for F-theory uh, swampland in this context. Then I'll briefly mention uh, the, uh, the effort when we, uh, uh, we were addressing uh, novel non-abelian enhancement and potentially obtaining novel part of matter when we use another part of our del bay group, namely the Mordel bay torsion. In the last part, I'm going to turn to uh, uh, the topic that would try to address uh, more complex representation in F theory, namely effectively higher index matter representations or as I will explain later, the exotic type by fundamental matter. And uh, I will conclude with some uh, concluding remarks. Uh, in this context, what I want to emphasize is primarily geometric perspective and, of course, highlighting the work done at Penn. So the part on uh, Bordel Bay uh, sections and global constraints on matter and gate symmetries uh, was done together with Lin Lin last year. And he has also presented that in a gong show here and with a poster. So I will often refer you to the poster when I address this issue. Uh, the work on novel gauge uh, symmetry enhancements and potentially obtaining no novel type of matter when uh, we are employing uh, the torsion part of Mordell symmetry, uh, Mordell Bay symmetry uh, group uh, was done together with Florent Baum, Craig Lorry, uh, who is also coming to Penn, and Ling Lin. And uh, the last topic, when we are uh, addressing higher index matter representations, namely focusing on exotic bifundamental matter in F theory. Uh, is done together with Jonathan Heckman, also now at Penn, and Ling Lin, and it should appear anytime. So, a few basic ingredients about F theory uh, are based on uh, uh, the so called non perturbative type to be perspective, where uh, we are probing non perturbative region of uh, type to be theory by compactifying the theory on singular elliptically fibered Calabiao manifolds. Uh, for three folds, this would correspond to compactification in four flat uh, space-time dimensions, and for four folds, that would correspond to compactification to, uh, sorry, to six, for three folds, and to four dimensions uh, with uh, Calabiao four folds. The uh, elliptic vibration is parameterized by a uh, by elliptic curve uh, whose uh, modular parameter specifies the strength of type 2B coupling 
and is uh, manifestly ethyl to Z uh, invariant, the signifying the uh, non-perturbative uh, non ethyl to Z invariant uh, invariance of type 2B theory. The standard parametrization of such elliptic vibration is represented by Weierstrass normal form, uh, where the homogeneous coordinates x, y, and z are those of uh, weighted projective space one, two, three, and the f and g sections in the vibration are parametrized via anti-canonical bundles, uh, sections of anti-canonical bundle of degree four and six, respectively. Now this vibration is singular, and at the singularity, when it degenerates, this degeneration typically signifies the blow up of a string coupling. And uh, in physics terms, the nature of this singularity uh, tells us something about the location of non-perturbative deep brains in this regime of string theory. So in particular, along four dimension one divisor in the base, such a uh, elliptic, uh, uh, when elliptic vibration degenerates along such a four-dimension one, this would signify in compactified theory the appearance of non-abelian gate symmetries. Intersection of two divisors uh, are associated with singularity in elliptic vibration that is nine co-dimension two and that signifies the appearance of corresponding matter. And the triple intersection signifies appearing of the couplings of the corresponding matter building blocks in compactified theory. So let me say one or two words about non-abelian gate symmetry, its nature in F-theory compactification. Uh, uh, again, uh, the notion of non-abelian gate symmetry appears uh, along the divisor for dimension one in the base and the, uh, uh, and the nature severity of the singularity is specified by the order of vanishing of f, g, and g functions and its corresponding discriminant. So we, uh, to, uh, to probe the nature of the singularity, we have resolved it with the trees of P1s over this divisor, basically forming exceptional or Cartan divisors. Uh, that uh, was a tree structure of P1s in the fiber uh, is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the corresponding uh, uh, diagrams of non-abelian gate symmetries. For example, that's an example of SU5 uh, uh, structure uh, of, uh, uh, of the tree of P1s uh, that indicates uh, the appearance of non-abelian gate symmetry. So how does non-abelian gate symmetry manifest itself in the compactified space? Uh, each of these P1s in the fiber are in one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, one comma one harmonic forms in the resolved uh, manifold. And we use this one comma one forums via M-theory crutch to Kaluza Klein reduce three-form potential of M-theory on this one comma one forums to get one forum, namely gauge, put, uh, gauge, uh, gauge bosons in lower dimensional. So each of these P1s basically is associated with the appearance of massless gauge boson in a, a lower dimension, in compactified theory uh, that is, uh, actually signifies the uh, gauge bosons uh, in the Cartan uh, sector of the non-abelian gauge symmetry. So the non-abelian gauge bosons are actually non-perturbative in this nature and by M-theory duality they are associated with light, light M2 brain excitations that wrap those P1s and as we shrink them, they become massless and complete the uh, gauge boson sector, uh, uh, completely uh, uh, the complete 
not appealing here to emotional sensitivity. How about matter? When two non abelian divisors intersect, we have a two dimension, a two dimension two singularity. We blow up the fiber. The fiber is generally I2 fiber and is wrapped now with an analog of M2 matter curve that wraps a particular uh, P1 in this I2 fiber. And one can determine the corresponding representation under non abelian gauge symmetry of this matter uh, by uh, uh, employing uh, the intersection theory of the matter curve with the result. So, with these building blocks, one motivated the study of globally consistent F theory compactifications, in particular for SU5 grand unifications, because it also led to, to a naturally occurring coupling of matter representation that describes the heaviest quark in nature, namely top quark. Uh, they were initial constructions were somewhat more local, but that was advanced. Uh, further to consistent global construction. It's only more recently that one has constructed globally consistent other particle physics models, namely models associated directly with the standard model uh, building blocks, uh, typically using uh, toric techniques uh, and uh, uh, further advancing these studies led to examples of the first globally consistent three family standard model, but also other particle physics models. What took us a, a much longer is to implement also a discrete gate symmetry in this construction. In addition to the standard model gate group, uh, uh, we wanted to implement our parity. This is for consistency of the standard model uh, that preserves lepton and barrier numbers, and so uh, we actually have now finally global three-family standard model with our parity realized as a discrete Z2 gate symmetry, and this is also about to appear. But I don't want to talk about it since this is string math conference, and let me go on to study on uh, further uh, development in the context of appearance of abelian gate symmetries in F-theory. So, abelian gate symmetries in F theory are geometrically appearing in somewhat different way because the, uh, uh, the harmonic 1,1 1 .1 forum uh, that is associated then with U1 gauge boson should be related to a divisor that is isolated. So, it should be uh, really I1 fiber uh, uh, only that uh, is associated with U1. Uh, divisors, and uh, uh, it was observed a long time ago that this U1 form, uh, one, from one form supporting U1 associated with isolated IY fibers are in one-to-one -one correspondence with rational sec uh, sections on, uh, of this elliptic uh, uh, calabia. So, uh, if we turn back, uh, from rational sections to rational points of elliptic curve, this uh, uh, additional rational sections are solutions of the Weierstrass uh, forum, in particular choice of field K, that in addition to zero point has also this additional rational point solution. This rational points form a group under addition with a zero point forming a uh, uh, identity element, and the group goes under the name of Mordelby group of rational sections. So let me show you how, uh, let me point out how this existence of rational, additional rational sections introduces for us the appearance of new divisors that support uh, a billion gate symmetry. So a rational, section, a rational point induces rational section, and this rational section in the elliptic perforation gives a rise to sort of a second copy of a base divisor. But this is basically due to vibration, a new type of divisor. And uh, out of this new type of divisor that is completely regular in the compactification and has some subtleties related to Shuda map, 
Nevertheless, out of this divisor, we can construct the uh, uh, dual one comma one forum, and indeed, this one comma one forum supports abelian U one gate symmetry and does it in one to one correspondence with the additional rational sections. So uh, the, that actually led uh, about five years or so ago to explicit constructions of elliptically fibered global compactifications that have additional rational sections. And in principle, the technology was developed by the linear via line bundle constructions on elliptic curves that typically led to models of Calabi elliptic curve with additional rational sections, was represented as a calabi yao one fold uh, uh, in a, a blow up of, of specific weighted projective spaces. So the first example with a one additional rational section was constructed by Morrison and Park and was basically the elliptic curve was a, a, a hypersurface constraint in a blow up of, uh, of P112 with one exception blow up. And then uh, our group and the Heidelberg group extensively developed constructions with two additional rational sections, which later led also to a, a, a further generalizations of uh, uh, constructions with two additional rational sections, to which I'll turn to in the next slide. And we managed to get actually to specific constructions uh, with three additional rational sections, which turns out to be complete intersection in, uh, uh, in P3 uh, that is blown up. So just general further story is not very clear at this point. But let me highlight this because that will be relevant for studying other representations uh, in F-theory compactification, which is, an which is a generalization of construction with two additional rational sections whose uh, elliptic curve uh, is a non-generic cubic in P2 itself. So uh, this particular non-generic cubic is specified by additional uh, uh, coefficients that we can vary and thus trace how, in addition to zero section, the two additional rational sections can move as we move in moduli space. So in particular, what we are able to study is now the collision of additional rational sections with each other and the zero section. When this happens, we expect the billion gate symmetry to disappear and non abelian gate symmetry to appear. In, in his, uh, physics language, we refer to that to unhixing, uh, namely original abelian gate symmetry turns at certain point in modulate space when rational points collide to non abelian gate symmetry. And uh, one can explicitly study in this context how this U1, this horizontal non-local divisors turn into this vertical non-abelian uh, divisors, both geometrically and also by studying the corresponding field theory associated with the metafields in this context. One byproduct is actually observation that we can enhance the gate symmetry as these points collide, uh, say to SU3 non-abelian gate symmetry, and at that point we find uh, also a new type of matter. In particular, it's, uh, it's the first example of symmetric to index representations that was there, the six of SU3 uh, as part of, the, of this uh, unhixed uh, phase, uh, namely a special point when the symmetry enhances the SU3. Uh, that led also to further construction of higher index representations directly in F-theory compactification, and I'll get to that later. But let me turn really now, uh, how much time do So I would really now like to highlight the, the, the novel development, and uh, I will focus first on global uh, uh, symmetry, gate symmetry constraint in the presence of U1 gate symmetry. Actually, that was a topic of Ling Ling's show, and it's in more detail described on his poster, so I will really just glance over it and uh, focus on the nature of the so-called Shuda map uh, that is there to describe the divisor that supports additional U1 gate symmetry. So the actual divisor that supports additional U1 gate symmetry 
is not just induced section divisor BQ, but is complementary also to the zero section divisor, uh, divisor so with the zero section, basically the base, and also additional resolution Cartan divisors of the corresponding non-abelian gate symmetry if it's there in the uh, compactification of the theory that I described earlier. So the Shioda map now involves a combination of divisors, including exceptional Cartan divisors of non-abelian gate symmetry, and it's actually this map that gives us the proper physics interpretation of Yuan gate symmetry. Uh, uh, so it's that type of divisor that we see for proper interpretation of Yuan gate symmetry map theory. And the key outcome is that in the presence of non-abelian gate symmetry, the Shuda map involves Cartan divisors with coefficients that are necessarily fractional numbers. Namely, these coefficients are determined by the Cartan matrix for the particular non-abelian uh, gate symmetry and also intersection of the base and uh, additional section divisor with the fiber of the exceptional divisors. And so these rational coefficients, when, uh, uh, for these rational coefficients, one can always find the minimal integer kappa for which combination of this, all these rational coefficients with kappa is now an integer. Now, this has important consequences for the allowed uh, uh, matter representations and global constraints on the non-abelian gate symmetry in the presence of this abelian one. In particular, one can construct explicitly the non-trivial central element of U1 cross G that acts indeed uh, as a central element on any uh, uh, non-abelian representation. And for details, you can go back to Link's poster. And then it's of order, uh, it's of order kappa. And furthermore, it acts on any non-abelian representation trivially. So consequence of this construction is that the total gate symmetry is not just U1 cross G, but it has to be modded out by the central element. And the matter has to be correspondingly compatible exactly with this global symmetry structure. So finding the proper kappa that determines for us the, the correct global structure in the presence of U1, which is globally non-trivial. The outcome of that is that uh, uh, constructions of SU5 got say with additional U1, or the standard model that naturally has additional U1 have, uh, are actually globally uh, 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 gate symmetries that are modded out by this uh, non So, uh, uh, so for this example that I already I sort of advertised in words, which is a globally consistent three-family standard model, the, is based on certain story construction with the gate algebra SU3 cross SU2 cross U1 associated with the standard model, and then uh, one sees that in this specific context, the origin of U1 produces a Shioda map with this specific rational coefficients in front of the exceptional divisors, which renders the central element to be of order six, and thus gauge symmetry group is modded out by Z6. The corresponding matter should also respect this global symmetry constraint, and actually it comes automatically from geometric study of the representation at two dimension to singularity, so it's self-consistent. This actually global conditions on uh, gate symmetry has implications for F theory swamp land criterion, namely uh, assuming that in the presence of non abelian gate symmetry, we do have a matter field that is uncharged under non abelian gate symmetry, and we would associate its charge, normalizing U1 charge to be one. So existence of such matter provides for us a matter six because from that point on, we see that there's uh, global conditions uh, uh, due to U1 in the presence of non-abelian gate symmetries imply that if we have 
two matter multiplexing the same non abelian rep representation by different U1 charges, the difference of these U1 charges now has to be an integer. There are globally consistent field theories, including with gravitational anomalies that do not satisfy that. And yet they satisfy all the anomaly conditions. So such theories would not be in F theory uh, compactification, so they would be in this, this one fact. So this is top down emission on charges. Uh, one worries about examples if we don't have any matter to begin with, but if we assume that we have non abelian matter in presence of your one, that is very likely that we'll also have a matter singular as well. So uh, this completes the arguments about swampland criterion. Uh, and uh, also interesting things happen. Uh, we can now uh, collide this U1, uh, uh, additional rational sections with zero section, lose U1 and get non-abelian unhixing, and some models turn out to be associated now with the regime in F theory that is not necessarily uh, treatable by uh, a geometric technique, namely strongly coupled CFT regime which are interesting to study, and I will say a few more things about that in a different context. Anyway, let me turn briefly now to another related topic about the role of Mordell V torsion and novel gauge uh, symmetry enhancements, uh, namely in addition to the rational sections and appearance of U1 gauge symmetries that we, uh, we can uh, have in elliptic vibration. Mordell V group contains also the uh, free part associated with torsional sections in, uh, in elliptic vibrations. Uh, now, there is an analog of a Shuda map associated with torsional sections, but the Shuda map has to end up to, to be zero because there is no U1 gate symmetry, there is no divisor associated with that. And so, a consequence of this special condition now is that actually uh, uh, we get integer condition on the weights and coefficients Li uh, associated uh, with, with this uh, exceptional Cartan divisors. And this condition on corresponding non-abelian representation parameterized by particular weights Wi tells us that now the global symmetry is modded out precisely by, by the ZNK gate symmetry. So we don't have the ones, but with the torsional section, the global symmetry is modded out by ZNK, as was uh, more recently addressed in the this paper. And so what uh, the few uh, additional insights that we gain in this context is by doing a particular gauge enhancement in the presence of Mordell Bay torsion, namely starting first with this free section and tuning our compactification. So free section means U1, tuning this compactification that this section becomes torsional. So the expectation is that in this context, the free section is tuned to be torsional section, and expectation is that at this uh, tuning point, the U1 is enhanced to non-abelian gate symmetry, but modded out precisely by the torsion part, Cn itself. So this is a typical expectation when uh, rational section becomes torsional. So this phenomenon uh, uh, is expected uh, to be viewed also when U1 is unhixed to non-abelian gate symmetry whose first homotopy group is non-trivial. And it's a little bit reminiscent what I mentioned to you about uh, unhixing examples with uh, colliding free sections. For example, when we collided two additional sections, there turns out to be a, a charged matter associated uh, with this original construction, but at the unhixed phase, namely when those sections collide, the symmetry enhanced to SU3 and the symmetric matter appear. So in the similar context I mentioned earlier, more concretely in the model U1 that also had matter, we charge now three, the, uh, when the U1 disappeared, collided with zero section, Actually, the symmetry enhanced to SU2, and the matter uh, that is associated with this charge matter 3 in the U1 model became 3 index symmetric representation. So that led to higher index representation. So that's what we were actually motivated by doing similar phenomenon by doing our torsional, uh, torsional unhixing. 
and let's take just Z2 torsion as a pro prototype. The earlier work started with the U1, and uh, construction had only charged matter one. So torsion, uh, when this became torsional section, the symmetry was in enhanced to SU2 and modded out by the torsion part Z2. And now the matter uh, uh, with charge one in U1 became a joint representation of the symmetry. So that's really somehow sitting in Cartan charge two. So we address related thing by starting with U1 compactification, but now having also charge matter two, and the question is, what could be the enhanced symmetry? Can we get higher index representation now since we started with higher charge one, uh, char charge U1 matter? Well, spoiler alert, it's not five representation, namely five, four index uh, representation of the symmetry that you would naively expect. And the fact that it didn't get that, that may well relate it to other swamp land or restrictions on appearance of higher index representations in that theory. What we actually got is the, uh, at the torsion point, our symmetry indeed did enhance to non-abelian gate symmetry, but only part of non-abelian gate symmetry was modded out by the Z2. Uh, this is actually novel because it was expected the whole non-abelian gate symmetry is modded out by Z2, but also the matter was in 511, but it was 500 meters. So it's a bit disappointing. So let me get now to the last part in this pursuit of higher index matter representation in F-theory compactification. And that's the work with Ling Lin and uh, Jonathan Heckman, and uh, is tr trying to get better understanding about higher type bifundamental representation, namely bifundamental when one factor is exceptional gate symmetry, like E6 or E7. And, uh, Motivation to pursue that is to somewhat invade this swampland conjectures where uh, with standard F-theory geometric technique, one came to a conclusion that higher index matter representations are limited. And for example, as I mentioned already, uh, uh, at most uh, three index symmetric representation of SU2 seems to appear via uh, Kodaira fiber classifications and further analogous conditions for higher SPM. But what's so puzzling is, let's think about the old stuff of heterotic string theory on orbifolds. In perturbative constructions, we get exotic bifundamental matter for free. For example, uh, for uh, six dimensions, going in heterotic uh, theory down to six dimensions, on Z2 orbifold, the gate symmetry is E7 cross SU2, and by for the matter, matter with 56,2 is there for right plus additional stuff. So why is it so easy to get it here and, and uh, going to F theory, we are facing some problems. Well, there is one fact. The way we got this exotic bifundamental matter on the heterotic side, it was actually an orbifold compactification. So there are uh, orbifold singularities there. But as far as F-theory goes, we should be open-minded about the singular nature of F-theory construction. So the natural candidate for F-theory construction that has the potential of getting this exotic bifundamental would be elliptic vibration where the base is Hertzebruck base. Well, because based on uh, uh, anomaly cancellation, we would need uh, the appearance of matter with 56,2 to be associated with uh, uh, intersections of E7 and SU2 uh, divisors to be 12, and that naturally leads to certain groups of 12. Well, we uh, employed a, a standard case algorithm with this base and uh, constructed the model where we expect to have E7 and SU2 gate symmetry in addition to E8. Uh, but it turns out to have non-minimal singularity points. B. Those are non kodara fibers uh, uh, at or above uh, 4, 6, 12 degeneration. So with this uh, non-minimal points, we expect strongly coupled superconformal field theory regime. Okay. And the typical techniques in this framework is to blow up the base 
and basically explore the ten tensor branch of this configuration. So we did that. So we, uh, we, uh, we have a particular uh, elliptic vibration that had both E7 and SU2 divisors, and in the base they intersected basically transversely. The blow up in the base produced very little structure, just one exceptional divisor that in this tensor branch does not uh, lead any additional new gauge groups, but it's not compatible what would be expect what we would expect uh, to match onto dual heterotics uh, spectrum. Namely, in this uh, regime, we have this additional strings and an extra tensor multiplet. And even more importantly, we have too many singlet fields which are associated with complex structure moduli in this elliptic vibration. So what do we do? Okay. We further tune complex structure of elliptic vibration, uh, which enlarges the nature of the blow-up sector. So as we further tune the elliptic vibration, we start with the divisor E7 and E6 that actually intersect uh, tangentially at order three. We figured this out because we knew that that's natural way how the matter can appear when we have the seven divisors intersecting with an additional sector. So we needed something that would be charged under E7, and that forced us to tune the complex structure so that such intersections are tangential of order three. Of course, that's not for Dira. And then uh, we went through a chain of blow-ups that when they led us then to finally Kodaira type thing, had very rich structure with a lot of additional gate symmetry factors, a lot of additional tensor multiplets and additional strings. So we propose that as a, uh, as a tensor uh, 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 regime of, uh, 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 of this construction, namely, uh, let's keep in mind, we, we fine-tuned the complex structure, we got no, con no, no Kodaira uh, strong public regime, we did the blow up and explored the tensor branch. Now what we are proposing is, as we blow down in this tensor branch to the strong coupling regime, center of uh, uh, origin of the tensor branch, we propose to activate in this context a Higgs branch deformation that would flow to perturbative quantum field theory that would have the correct gate symmetry and perturbative spectrum associated with uh, uh, bi exotic bifundamentals, etc., and other fields needed. And uh, uh, this indeed works, and the way we uh, understand that is that due to complex structure tuning, we have lost many additional singlets that were too many to have the, the regime uh, uh, that uh, we could associate with this uh, uh, exotic by fundamental uh, domain. So anyway, we lost complex structure singlet in the tensor branch, proposing tensor branch, then we are, we are transmuting strings and tensor multiplets to weakly coupled field theory description that would have the spectrum that we want to have. So how do we deduce now the spectrum in the, in the Higgs branch? Uh, it's really anomaly conservation that we use. We started in the tensor branch and where we can analyze the anomalies, and these anomalies have to be the same as the anomalies in the Higgs branch. And that uniquely deduced for us in the Higgs branch perturbative field theory spectrum with this gate symmetry and by the fundamental matter plus the extra stuff that is needed that actually turns out to complete, uh, uh, is completely consistent with the dual heterotic orbital distribution. So one comment before I conclude, well, a few little comments before I conclude on the slide. Uh, I want to point out that there's engineering of fine tuning to get to the superperformer point, uh, crucially uh, relied on tangential intersection between E7 and uh, SU2 divisors to be of order two because that gave us the only chance to have the right matter uh, we, uh, that, that, that in the Higgs branch would be five fundamental matter, uh, exotic five fundamental matter. And then the second thing that in the global construction
production, we have these divisors intersecting also in other locations, but we have to further fine tune this complex structure so that all this additional co dimension two singularities collapse to this strongly coupled point. And that uniquely determines the, uh, this, this uh, Higgs branch, uh, not Higgs branch, the tensor branch, uh, and, and this whole structure that we obtain through blow up in the tensor branch. And uh, uh, one by one to add, we are proposing this Higgs branch deformation to identify weakly coupled sector with exotic by fundamentals. And uh, we really cannot firsthand analyze this deformation to Higgs branch from a strongly coupled regime. We don't have enough information. Uh, maybe we could at some point identify the correct operators that could lead us to this uh, Higgs branch more explicitly from strongly coupled regime. But one thing is for sure, this deformation has nothing to do with complex structure deformation. And it really has all the flavor of T-brain data type, which of course we are not explicit enough, but this is really the, uh, our anticipation. And as one more consistency check, what we also obtain is through stable degeneration. This tuned F theory uh, construction also produced the correct heteronic dual or before geometry as well. So we have all these independent checks, and so this is you know approaching from all sides to identify really exotic uh, by fundamental matter in F theory as the Higgs branch. Uh, So let me conclude. So I'm glad that for a change I have enough time to say all the things I wanted to say. Uh, so uh, the focus of more recent work was really to shed more light on global conditions in F-theory compactification. First, in the presence of a billion uh, gauge group factor associated with a uh, uh, Mordell Bay part, a uh, uh, Mordell Bay group. And so the free part produced the presence of U1 that together with non-abelian gate symmetry via Schuder map really impose additional global uh, conditions on the whole uh, symmetry and corresponding charges. And that also led, uh, led us to swamp head conjecture, uh, F theory conjecture in this context. The torsion part, namely enhancing gate symmetry by uh, tuning free section into torsional section gave us novel type of enhancement of gate symmetries, well, but not enough exotic new type of representation. So in this program, we are now pushing the frontiers by going uh, really, uh, by, by addressing the study of exotic type fundamental matter in F theory by really uh, employing first geometric techniques and then probe strongly coupled sector and proposing via Higgs branch uh, the, uh, the identification of weakly coupled field theory sector with this bifundamental matter. And this proposal uh, is really uh, relying uh, and actually gives unique results due to the fact that anomalies from tensor branch to Higgs branch have to be canceled. And uh, we also demonstrated similar things for another example of U6 cross SU3 and again by fundamental of exotic type like that as well. And uh, so, so in particular, I believe that uh, uh, this engineering construction from F theory can be really advanced uh, in, in a number of these contexts that uh, tell us more about um, weakly coupled field theory with exotic matter that we couldn't get via just geometric construction in F theory. But nevertheless, it is something. Anyway, uh, actually, the appearance of these exotic by fundamentals is leading us into a new direction now because we have a phase now where Higgsing of these symmetries will lead also to higher index representations, say, four index representation of diagonal SU2 symmetry. Okay. And this type of matter can further be Higgs and lead us to non-abelian discrete symmetries within F theory context. And so we want to address all these aspects, both of course from field theory identification, but if possible also through geometric techniques to eventually reach actually first explicit example of uh, 
theory with uh, non-abelian discrete gates.